Hi and welcome to this video about BPMN gateways. I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to show you the different gateways which we have available in Flowable. To get started, I already started Flowable Design, Work and Control. We are going to model a simple process and from there we then basically proceed uh, in trying it out and see how the different gateways behave. So let's create a new app and that I'm going to call my gateway app since it will be all about gateways. And in that app, I'm going to create one first process model. So let's say add model, then create a new model process. And I call the first one exclusive gateway test. In here, we are going to model obviously an exclusive gateway. Now I'm here in Flowable Design and the Design Editor. Um, in case you haven't seen that before, it might be worth it to check out our video about Hello World with uh, Flowable. Now in this uh, here, I'm going to use an exclusive gateway. And an exclusive gateway is a way to say we would like to have multiple outgoing sequence flows. Sequence flows are the arrows here between the start event and the exclusive gateway, and I'm going to draw more of those. And only one of them should be taken based on a uh, condition. So let's say this here is uh, option one, and we are going to add another one, which we are going to call option two. So let's name that one here option two. And then eventually we normally move uh, what we have done back with an exclusive gateway also uh, to then eventually our end. So here we have a simple process where we say after we take the start event, we have that sequence flow. From there, we are taking either option one or option two, and then eventually we move back together one uh, sequence flow. Obviously, you could also have multiple or more than one task for each of those flows. Now, from my point of view, it's best practice to say, um, here on a uh, kind of question um, on that exclusive gateway. So we can say here, uh, um, for example, option one, and then we say on the sequence flow up, yes, and on the sequence flow down, we say no. Now we still need to make the flowable engine know what means option one question mark, and therefore we need to have some input information. Input information I can produce when I add a uh, start form. Let's say that capture information is the name of our start form. And for now, we just keep that, that really simple. So we say we have a uh, checkbox here and call that one option one question mark. And uh, this is going to store this automatically in a variable option one. Now to use that, we need to still go ahead and define here on our sequence flows what that means. So on the sequence flow, which is going up here, we can say we would like to have a condition expression. Here it uh, allows us with the burger menu, actually let me show that you again. That's the little button here on the side to define an uh, expression based on our uh, decision builder. Alternatively, when you click on the text, you can also add an uh, expression in here. But this is not going to be the focus from now. So I'm just using the decision builder. where I have here the choice of option one. And I can say that is supposed to equals true. And for the other one, I can go ahead and say condition expression option one that is supposed to equals false. So with that, we have those two options and either one of those is going to be taken. Alternatively, to define a uh, condition expression, you can also make it the default flow. When you mark it as a default flow, you see that small little dash, which is going through your sequence flow and you should not have an expression in there. Since I already have an expression, I will skip the part with the default flow now. Let's save that and then publish it. Once published, we can then go ahead and go to flow will work and execute our process model there. Therefore, I click on new here at the top then click on work. And in here, I can now say for my exclusive gateway test, I am going to say either option one or not option one. So 
So let's start with option one checked. So we see then in this case, we have our task option one and we look at our process model, went ahead and took the upper part of our execution. When we complete this, we see it is going to end our process. Now let's start another one. And this time I'm not going to check the option one. So with that, we basically then take the option two task. We see here when we go to our history, that option two is now taken. And with that, we basically took the lower part of our process and we can uh, complete it. Now, when we look at the history again, we see our process model is completed. And that's already all what I would like to tell about the um, exclusive gateway. And next, we are going to add another uh, process model, which is going to be about the parallel gateway. So let's uh, look at what the parallel gateway is. And that is also available in here on the left hand palette where we have a section with all the gateways. So here we have the parallel gateway and I can simply add that up start event. After the parallel gateway, I'm going to add two tasks again. Let's call it this time task one. And the second one we are going to call task two. So uh, with that, I now have uh, here the process model. Again, I'm going to merge those back again with a uh, parallel gateway. So typically you have for the start and the end the exactly same gateway and you are using uh, both of them basically then want to split it up and want to merge it. As the parallel gateway to tells you already, it's parallel. So we don't need to have conditions in here. So we will take both of them at the same time. Let's save that and publish that and uh, execute it. In this case, we don't have a start form. So it was a little bit quicker to actually do that. And when we click here on the parallel gateway test, we see that we have task one in here. However, global redirects you directly to one of the tasks when you are the assignee. So uh, in this case, I can go back to the process and I see that I have task one and task two at the same time. When I look at the history, I also see here, both of them are active right now. So it's uh, parallel here for us. And with that, I can just complete one task. After I completed one task, we see actually in the history here that this task is completed. We are already here at our merging parallel gateway, but our task one is still uh, waiting for completion. And that's why the end event did not activate yet. So let's complete that task. And once that one com uh, is completed, we see that both of them are completed and our parallel uh, process is basically done. So both tasks are completed in which order you do them doesn't matter. The next gateway, which I would like to show you is the inclusive gateway. So let's look at the uh, inclusive gateway. And we create another business process, inclusive gateway test. And in here, we are going ahead and adding the inclusive gateway. It's again in that section with gateways. And we see here, we have the inclusive gateway. And uh, for that one, we are again going ahead and adding um, that option of having two of them. So now we say here we have uh, option one, option two, and maybe another one, which is our default. And uh, in this case, I'm just using that to visualize you also here the default flow in addition to our option one and option two. So let's uh, simply go ahead and connect all of them. And the inclusive gateway is actually a combination out of the parallel gateway and the exclusive gateway. So in here, we can take multiple flows, but we don't need to. So similar to what we have had before, we have here the possibility to define conditions. Therefore, um, uh, input, I'm going to create a new form input data where we are going to use uh, checkboxes again. So let's say we have here one for option one, 
and I add another one for option two. So with that, we have a combination of both Can take both of them, but we don't need to. And we can here again describe that this is going to be option one, this is going to be option two. Simply double click the sequence flow, or when you single click the sequence flow, you can also add the name uh, in here. But the default flow, I can directly check here the default flow. And now I still need to define conditions. For option one, I'm going to say that is a condition expression again, the burger menu that is equals to true for option one. And option two in this case, I'm going to do the same thing. Option two equals true. So uh, in this case, it doesn't matter what option one is. We only care about option two. Let's save that, publish it again, and then we are going to uh, start a new process here. So let's say here we would like to start our inclusive gateway test, and we have the option to check either option one, option two, or actually both. So let's check both, and we see we have now both of them created. When we complete uh, both of them, we see actually that it moves forward until we uh, completed both of them that will be uh, stuck at the point before. So it's enough to complete both of them. We don't need to complete the default since we never reached that one. So let's go ahead and use another one where we just check option one, or actually we could also go for option two. In this case, we are going to see uh, that option one is not activated now, and we simply have option two. Now complete also completes the process here, and we can do a last test. And in this test, I'm not going to check anything. And we see actually that then results in that we are taking the default flow. So that's the one which is down there. When we complete that, it's also completed. Note that the default flow is only executed in case no other sequence flow is taken. And with that, we are um, go are coming already to the last gateway, and that is the event-based gateway. So for the event-based gateway, uh, we are talking about events which are then happening next. So that's also a gateway which you see basically in here in the list of gateways. So we have an event-based gateway. For the event-based gateway, you normally merge uh, actually with an exclusive gateway then at the end. And here, everything is about events. So rather than defining directly a user task or human task behind that, we are normally going ahead and defining something like an um, uh, event. And we have here somewhere the intermediate events. So those are the uh, boundary events. And here we have the catching intermediate events. And we can use basically all of them uh, to define something here. So we could say uh, that's our timeout after one minute, uh, which we are going to use. And here we say after a duration of one minute, we would like to trigger that timer. So with that, uh, we are going this flow and then that shouldn't have happened. I just pressed a node uh, field there, but I don't want to do a node. And we say timeout here. And alternatively to that, we could say we have, for example, a signal catching intermediate event, which is catching a signal. So for example, contract received. And then uh, we uh, have here on task, for example, do something and we are going to connect that one here as well and we then basically move that over here and this one um, we move over here and with that we are going ahead and basically ending the process now we still need to configure our signal uh, for the signal i click here just outside and say I would like to have a signal definition. That's my test signal and I just copy that since I'm going to need that again. And uh, then I can select here the signal reference, which is my test signal. And I now create another process, which is 
uh, my send signal process. And in this process, I define the same signal over here. So here I have the signal definition test signal. Since I specify here global instead of process instance, all process instances with that signal will receive that event. And I can now say I have a sim simple signal throwing intermediate event, which is taking my test signal. And that one is then uh, sending out that signal. So when I now go ahead and save and publish that, I can uh, simply go ahead and say, I would like to start a new um, event-based gateway test. And that event-based gateway test is now here stuck at my two points. So I have either the timer where I now need to talk one minute until that timeout is actually triggered, or I simply go ahead and in flow the control, go to processes drops where I now see I have currently an active timer drop and that timer drop I can just move from here and when once I move it that is executed and we see we are now here in the timeout we are no longer waiting uh, for that signal so we can complete the timeout and we took this path. On the other hand when I start it again and then use the event-based gateway test we see basically this is over here. When we look at our timer drops, we have again, the timer drop is active. Here we see actually also when the timer drop will execute. And then when I now say, I would like to have a, sig a send signal process, then our event gate, uh, event based gateway process actually takes the second part since now we receive the actual signal, which we have had before when we do something then we are back here on track and everything uh, is basically as it's supposed to be. Our process is done. With that, we already reached the end of this movie about gateways. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to check out also our additional videos, which we have here above. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.